Today, we're diving headfirst in the teeny tiny world of Grounded. Brace yourself for some bug-sized survival strategies that'll leave you feeling tougher than an ant at a bodybuilding contest. And hey, if you're here because you're not quite sure what Grounded is or all about and you're on the fence about diving into this bug-filled adventure, fear not. I'm here to guide you through the grass and show you just how accessible and exciting this game can be. So, without further ado, let's shrink down and explore together. Alright, first up, always remember the golden rule. Collect everything and scan everything. And I mean literally everything. Scan a rock, boom, new recipe. Scan a blade of grass, congratulations, you're now the proud owner of a grass-powered jetpack. Okay, maybe not the jetpack, but you get the idea. Scan everything. Head back to that resource analyzer anytime you stumble upon a new item so you can scan it and unlock awesome new crafting recipes. Now, let's talk about your first crafted weapon, the Peblet Spear. Always, and I mean always, have a couple on hand. You throw one and miss? No worries. Just whip out another and pretend you meant to do that. It saves you the hassle of having to play fetch with your missed spear when your dinner's about to get away. Alright, let's move on to the story. And no spoilers, I promise. Just understand that progress in the story equals advancements. The deeper you dive into the tale, the fancier stuff you unlock. It's like leveling up in a game, but with more bugs and less experience grinding. And trust me, you will want these shiny new toys for the adventures ahead. Here's why. Creature spawn points? They're like little bug motels. You get familiar with the areas, you learn their hangout spots, and you'll be squashing even the biggest of bugs in no time. But beware. This is only the beginning. Once you've conquered the game and you think you know it all, bam. New game plus drops, like a surprise party. Changing spawn points and tossing in mutant creatures for good measure. It's like the game saying congratulations, now it's time to try for real. So, just understand that the first playthrough is more of a get to know the game, have fun. New game plus is where the challenge will come. Alright, and here is a quick secret concept for you. Pay attention to those crafting recipes that pop up. It'll say craft this item, then it will direct you with a marker to a specific material you'll need to craft that item when you have on tutorials. Speaking of which, on that first playthrough, turn on those tutorials. It will really help you understand how to acquire a certain crafting material like sap. This marker will guide you to the nearest resource like a helpful GPS. Take advantage of it and stock up on resources. What I mean by take advantage of it is, even after you've acquired the materials you need to craft the item in the request that you got, if you don't craft the item, you will still continue to receive the markers. Meaning if you don't know how to find sap, then you can easily farm up like 10 or 20 drops of sap before you complete this crafting request. By this time, you will have a much better understanding of where to look for sap in the future, and a nice little stockpile to start out with. Alright, let's talk high quality H2O. There's water. Literally water everywhere. But not water you'd want to drink. Until now. When you're parched and you're panicking, just look up. Yep, that's right. Tiny droplets will cling to grass like they're holding on to their last lifeline. Climb up there and take a sip. Or if you're feeling adventurous, give that grass a good little whack with trusty axe and watch the liquid gold tumble down. Just watch out when you do this though, because gravity can have a cruel sense of humor. Sometimes that precious water takes a detour straight into the filthy water or lands in a puddle leaving you high and dry. But fear not, there's still hope if that fails. Keep your eyes peeled for nectar drops left by those clumsy aphids. Sure, they may be a little scatterbrained, but they're generous with their little snacks. A little sip of nectar can keep you going, providing you a boost of food and a little bit of water when you need it most. Alright, now picture this. You're out exploring, minding your own business when suddenly a warning pops up on your screen like a rude awakening. It's the dreaded thirsty notification reminding you that the hydration is key to survival. But what if the only water around you is the filthiest of the filthy water? I mean, look at that color. Ugh. All right, the eternal dilemma. If you dare drink from the filth water, you will quench your thirst. But at what cost, you may ask? Brace yourself for the skull icon of doom signaling your descent into sickness. Your food major will start draining faster than you could say, well, that was a bad idea. But fear not. There is a cure. Just catch some Z's and shake off that sickly feeling. Pro tip, save your filth water indulgence for sunset so you can sleep off the consequences and wake up feeling fresh as a daisy. However, if you choose to drink that nasty water at sunrise, just know you're going to spend the entire day feeling hungrier than a bear in hibernation. And this buff or debuff does stack up to three times, meaning it can get severely worse. 
All right, speaking of hibernating, let's talk about stocking up on some food. This backyard is full of tasty bug snacks. When you're feeling hungry enough to eat a horse, remember, your ant size and bugs are going to be your grub. First up, we've got those baby red ants, the tiny tyrants of the yard. Rule number one, don't mess with them unless you're itching for a bug-sized battle royale. Trust me, you do not want to end up on the wrong side of an ant army. Those little critters do not mess around. You leave them be, and they'll leave you be. Simple as that. Now, on to the weevils. They're like the slow pokes of the insect world, trudging along without a care in the world. Honestly, you could probably defeat them with a the well-aimed sneeze. It's that easy. So whether you're rocking them, bopping them, or popping them, weevils are going to go down faster than a klutz in a banana peel factory. And bonus, they draw something called weevil meat. Scan that bad boy and voila, you've unlocked the prestigious ability to craft a beautiful weevil shield. But when it comes to hunger, last but not least, we've got the aphids in the starting area. The little speed demons of the starting area. And if you blink, you'll miss them. They zip around like experienced NASCAR drivers. But fear not, there is always a way. You'll hear them, but not see them. Just look up. These little Spider-Man wannabes are usually hanging up upside down on the edge of a blade of grass. In the same spot, you'd find those precious dewdrops. So, with a swift spear throw, you can send these little rascals packing with just one hit. And why bother, you ask? Because of what we mentioned earlier. They occasionally drop the aphid honeydew, the holy grail of bug snacks. So when water emergencies guzzle down that sweet syrup, and you'll be rejuvenated faster than a superhero with a fresh cape. There you have it. That is a scoop on bug bites. Bon appetit, my friends. All right, let's talk crafting. First things first, let's talk about tools. You will want to immediately whip up a peblet spear, peblet axe, torch, and a peblet hammer. Think of them as your bug buster starter pack, perfect for poking, chopping, lighting, and hammering your way through the wilderness. All right, let's talk about building your bug-sized bachelor pad. You're going to start small, so think of the things like a storage chest, because let's face it, your pockets are about to burst with bug loot. And trust me, you do not want to get caught with aphid goo leaking all over your pants. There will certainly be some questions I'm explaining from some of your friends. Next up, fire up that roasting spit, because nothing says... Home sweet home, like a barbecue with freshly skewered weevils and aphids. Oh yes, that sounds amazing. But wait, there's more. You will definitely want to set up a lean-to, your very own respawn point, because let's be real. Getting chomped on by a spider and having absolutely no idea where you may end up when you respawn is no one's idea of a good time. And speaking of spiders, did I mention? They come out at night. It's just like those pesky zombies in Minecraft. They're ready to crash your bug bash. Bet fear not, you can hit the hay and snooze through that eight-legged fiesta. Last but not least, when it comes to building, let's talk about the crafting bench. This is an essential starting piece. This bad boy is your ticket to upgrading your gear and crafting your armor that's tougher than a cockroach's exoskeleton. Or it might just give you some buffs here and there. But here's a pro tip for you. The red ant armor is going to be the best starting armor. Just again, be cautious with the ants like we discussed earlier. And if something needs fixing or repaired, Hold off if you're planning to upgrade it soon. Why, you may ask, because when you upgrade an item, not only does it give it a new makeover, but it repairs the item as well. Talk about killing two bugs with one stone. All right, speaking about killing bugs, let's talk about combat. Nothing says fun like squaring off against a spider the size of a small car. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. At least not in the early game. So, let's start with the ants. It is best to steer clear early on. I already mentioned this earlier, but those tiny terriers might look like harmless little individuals. Trust me, you mess with one and you have the entire ant neighborhood knocking on your door faster than you can say ant party. And as for that big ass ladybug, yeah, it's cute and it's chubby, but do not let that fool you. That boss size health bar is there for a reason. It's like going up against a take in a pillow fight. So unless you're armed with a hammer as mighty as Thor's, just leave them be for now. P.S. That was me telling you that they're weak to smash damage. Hint, hint. And spiders. Let's just say they're the stuff of nightmares. Seriously, have you seen the size of those things? It's like nature decided to take creepy and crank it up to level 11. So unless you've got a death wish, I suggest avoiding them until you've leveled up your bug bashing skills quite a bit. Also, if spiders are a make or break for you on this game, did you know that the developers put in a special accessibility option just for you? 
Literally every single spider in the game can be turned into a giant blob of goo. Literally a blob of goo to ease those spider fears. It doesn't mean that they hurt any less, they just might look a little less scary. Still, stay clear. Oh, and a little tip for surviving the night. Sleep. I know. That's groundbreaking stuff right here. You heard it here first. But seriously, spiders are way more active after dark, so if you value your sanity and your limbs, it is best to catch some Z's when the sun goes down. Now, let's talk about offense. Your trusty spear is only going to get you so far, so it is time to level up your arsenal. Start working on that spring bow as soon as possible. Trust me, it'll come in handy when you're staring at a giant spider with murder in its eyes. Speaking of murder in its eyes, did you know that any creature who becomes aggressive towards you will have their eyes turn red? Well, that's certainly one way to scare a teenager. Okay, next here. If you see any gnats buzzing around, swat them like you're playing bug baseball. They might be annoying little pests, but they won't actually damage you. They're just going to bump into you and buzz, buzz, buzz. But they have got the goods you need to craft that bow. So it's well worth the effort. And when it comes to defense, remember this mantra. Block, block, block. Perfect block, perfect parry. Sure, you could try cheesing the bugs and the spiders by blocking off their pass or hiding in some hole. But that's only going to work so long. Later in the game, those options are few and far between. And where's the fun in that? So practice your blocking skills and get ready to unleash that inner bug-smashing badass that you know you are. There you have it, Combat Tips 101. All right, let's move on to scanning here. Ah, scanning. The Bug Hunter's equivalent of playing Pokemon Snap, but with fewer Pikachu and a lot more spiders. Early on, like real, real early, you unlock the ability to scan creatures. And then suddenly, you will feel like the Steve Irwin of this backyard. This magical power is known as the Peep R mode. Peeping does sound a bit like creeping. Don't worry their bugs it's okay once you've scanned a critter you will unlock its very own creature card complete with a glamour shot of that creature listing its weaknesses resistances and even an own personal little bio because nothing says bonding with nature like knowing all of your enemies deepest darkest secrets and if you're too busy dodging attacks to scan during a fight don't sweat it just wait until the dust settles and you can snag that card from its cold lifeless corpse isn't that just lovely? All right, but here's the kicker. The real treasure isn't just in collecting cards like you're some kind of bug-obsessed hoarder. No, it is the chance of scoring a golden card drop. That's right, we're talking rare, shiny, and worth its weight in bug guts. Normal creatures have about a 1% chance of dropping a golden card, but bosses and special critters, they feel a little bit more generous just due to the effort it takes, and they give you a solid 10% chance of that drop. And if it is an enemy you can only face once, you'll have a guaranteed drop of the gold card. And let me tell you, nothing says I'm the bug king like a shiny golden card collection. Now, I could spill the beans on all the juicy details of what happens when you collect enough golden cards, but where's the fun in that? Let's just say it involves mutations, bonuses, and maybe a little bit of bug theme magic. So grab your scanner, keep your eyes peeled for golden opportunities, and remember... Gotta scan them all. Alrighty then, we've covered more ground than a mole with a caffeine addiction. From managing your munchies and staying as hydrated as a desert cactus to building bases that even ants would envy, we have done it all. And let's not forget about mastering combat, because nothing says I'm ready to rumble, like facing off against a horde of angry bugs armed with nothing but a pebble and a very nice dream. And let's not forget about scanning. Keep those peepers peeled and your scanner handy, because you never know when you may stumble upon a bug with a secret talent for tap dancing. All right, so with food in our bellies, bases to call home, combat skills to rival a ninja, and a scanner that would make even James Bond jealous, it is time to bid adieu. But before you go, tiny adventurers, don't forget to show some love and give that like button a gentle tap. And consider joining our Bug Battling Brigade by hitting that subscribe button. On this channel, you never know what kind of adventure we may end up in. Be it battling car-sized spiders, running from zombies in the middle of the night, being chased by angry dinosaurs, or avoiding the leviathans of the deep. So, until then, stay grounded.